Good morning, people of YouTube and Twitch. I think yesterday I said Twitter and YouTube, but, you know, it's neither here nor there. Um, all right, so it is earlier than normal. We're here with another episode of, another episode where I play, you know, some magic before I go to work. It is 4.53. Oh, woof, sometimes babies just will not cooperate on the time that you, you know, when you would like to get up. So uh, it means you get up at their time when they want you to get up. So this is where we're at. So the saga of Esper Control continues. I don't think we've had bad luck with this deck. I think I'm gonna make a change though, and we'll see how I like this, but um, I wanna look for, I think it's Thassa. No, not Thassa's Intervention. What am I looking? Omen of the Sea. Omen of the Sea. I think I wanna replace the Prophecies with Omen of the Sea. These prophecies always feel, I don't want to say strange, but there seem to be enough moments where I don't want to, I don't know, it, I, they just haven't felt that good to me yet, so we're going to try these where I think the reward feels a little bit more immediate, because with the um, Metamized Prophecy, you know, you play it, you scry, you know what's coming, then I have another turn, I'll draw a scryed card. I have to choose a card name, and then I'm kind of boxing myself into that card, and and maybe it's just me that I'm not quite skilled enough with this deck to successfully execute that. I mean, I see that the value, right, I'm going to get to draw two instead of the one, but it just hasn't felt good. So we're going to take it out for now. We're going to try it, um, and we're going to get on in there. Standard ranked, Esper control, best of three. Let's do it. My other goal for today is to try to be a little bit more... Uh, careful with my words. Yesterday I could tell I was playing and trying to think about the games and also think about streaming, stuff like that. And I'd be really kind of loose with card names. I wouldn't say card names. I'd be like, oh, that thing and this bitty, this bitty or whatever. You know, I'd use, I'd use like little stand-in words for my brain. Um, and so I'm going to try not to do that. I'm going to try to be much more explicit about what is happening in the game and things like that. Okay. So I get to choose if I want to draw or play first. I'm going to play first. I almost always will play first. Uh, opening hand, we've got three lands, two temples and a watery grave, two temples of enlightenment, so three blue, two white, one black, a dream trawler, a nars two narsets, and an atrice, oracle of half-truths. So a three land opener is perfectly acceptable. Uh, dream trawler, I'm pretty far away from yet, but that's okay, it's a great card depending on the matchup. I'll be able to play both narsets, and I'll very likely get to the fourth mana with these two temples. So we're going to keep this hand. And we'll see what our opponent, Ryan RG Gaming, which you can't see his name now, but... So I go first. So we're going to start with the Temple of Enlightenment. Let's scry one here. We see another Narset. I think I'm putting this Narset to the bottom. I mean, Narset's a great card, but A, I'm looking for more lands, and B, I'm already holding two Narsets. Let's move our Dream Trawler over to the Trawler. Dream Trawler to the right. Thought Erasure is a good draw. Do I play the Watery Grave now to get it out, or do I play another Temple to scry off the top? I think since he just played a Watery Grave himself, it's very likely he's either Esper or Demir, and I think I'd rather just get in his hand and see what he's holding before, you know, because if he's holding his own Thought Erasure, I'm going to lose mine. So I think I have to play the Watery Grave right away, and I Thought Erasure him when I have the chance. And so looking in his hand, we see an Oath of Kaya, a Guild Globe, and a Dance of the Mance. So we're against an Esper Stax list, which actually is quite strong. If you don't know what Esper Stax is, it's a deck built around... Oh, I can't remember the name of the card for the life of me now. Um, oh, Doom Foretold, which we'll talk about if we see it. But right, he's going to be playing a lot of artifacts and enchantments that he can sacrifice to Doom Foretold. So Oath of Kaya is kind of a dead card in this matchup. Guild Globe is good for cycling, but I mean, I think I just get rid of this Dance of the Mance. This is a power card, and he's already holding four lands. He's played a fifth, so he's going to be able to put things back and play with Dance. So Dance has to go. And a land on top, and I'm happy to take that land. And so here we go. I expect to see the Guild Globe come down here out of our opponent's hand, depending on what he drew. And Guild Globe comes into play. All right, and he draws a card. Great. So now do we Temple, or do we get this Narset in play? I think we get this. I mean, 
if I play the Narset, I am just asking. Well, I've got an idea. Let's, um, this might seem insane. So he's gonna, my opponent's gonna have a lot of cards, a lot of artifacts that cycle, right? So when Gilgolub enters the battlefield, draw a card. Um, the other one I think is Golden Egg. It is an artifact, enters, it's gonna let him draw a card. So I think we're going to get the Narset out, and what I'm gonna do is I'm not going to minus the Narset to look for a card. Well, because I could play another Narset next turn. So I think if I minus this one, he'll play the Oath of Kaya to kill it. Um, he'll be out of mana for that turn. Next turn, I'll play another Narset, and then he's not going to... Okay, so let's minus her. So Omen of the Sea, Narset. I think I'm grabbing another... So what I got off my Narset is a Temple of the Sea. Can't take that. Oath of Kaya. Not too interesting in this matchup, I don't think. I don't expect him to play a lot of creatures. Uh, Omen of the Sea, which is maybe good... Comes at an instant speed, let me scry, or a Narset. I think the Narset's more important, again, because my opponent is cycling. And I know I already just turned down a Narset. But right, if it's between Narset and Omen, I, I think I have to keep the Narset. Alright, and here we go. And yep, as I predicted, the Oath of Kai is going to come down for my opponent. It's going to kill my Narset. And we're just going to throw another Narset right down. Okay, our draw was a Temple of Silence. Which isn't bad. We need the land drops. I... And it's okay, since we already planned on playing our Narset this turn, so let's drop out our Scryland. We see a Temple of Deceit on top. So I'm tempted to keep this. Problem being, though, is that I'm holding a Temple. That would be my fifth land. If I take this Temple, that'd be my sixth land, but I'm still, what, one, two, three turns away from playing my Dream Trawler because these are all tap lands. So I think I bottom this. I'm confident. I'm going to bottom this land because I believe that this Atreus, there's a very high chance that the Atreus will find me an untapped land, which I'll be playing next turn, and then we can Dream Trawler the turn after that. Whew. Okay. So let's just run a Narset down. And I'm trying to decide if I should minus my Narset this time. I think I do. Agonizing Remorse, Teferi the Time Raveler, Ashiok Nightmare Muse. This is some some great stuff. Holy cow. So I think we're going to Teferi here, just for the card advantage. But that was a hard choice. Oh man, the Ashiok was good. All that stuff was good. So my opponent does not play anything. Um, so I think we start out with a Narset activation. Omen, two Omens of the Sea and a Tyrant Scorn and a Dream Trawler. I think I'm going to grab the Omen. Because what I'd like here is I'm going to play the Teferi. You're, what? <laughs> I think I'm going to play the Teferi and keep Omen of the Sea up. So if my opponent plays Doom Foretold, I can sack the Omen of the Sea to it. So let's pay a blue, a white, and a black, sure. And we'll Teferi. And what I think I want to do is actually I'm going to return the Guild Globe to his hand, because my opponent cannot draw an extra card during his turn. And then we're going to throw out the Swamp, because I don't want to take damage if I don't have to, and then if he drops a Doom Foretold, we're just going to Omen of the Sea right away, and I'm going to keep both my Planeswalkers, it's going to be perfect. And then he'll have to sack his own Othakaya. So, opponent plays a Tapland, a Temple, he's up to 4 mana now. Looks like he's been having some Tapland issues as well. He's not going to do anything this turn. Interesting. So I'm going to draw. I'm going to run out this Omen in the Sea. Temple, Temple. I don't need either of these. So they're both going to the bottom off this scry, and we'll draw our card. And another land. Okay. And an Oath of Kai. So that's not bad. So let's plus our Teferi. And I think we're... Oh, I should pay attention. How many land? I need two blue, two white. Am I going to have that? two blue, and here's my two white, so pay two life. And the Dream Trawler is going to come into play. 
And I have plenty of cards to discard to the Dream Trawler, so... And my opponent cannot play spells at instant speed right now. It's a very up. So we're in very good shape right now. Thought Erasure is perfectly fine, my man. It does. It literally does nothing to me. He will probably take the Atreus. Oh, he takes the Narset. Okay. Because he would like to draw more cards with this Guild Globe. I'm guessing that's why he took it. So he's got to be able to get rid of the Narset so he can start playing the Guild Globe to cycle things. Puts a land in tapped. He's got three mana open. And it's looking like my opponent is passing the turn right now. He's done. Okay. Drew another land. We're drawing a, drawing a few too many lands now. We're going to plus our Teferi. So let's Temple of Enlightenment here. A D Spark. D Spark's great if we see the Doom Foretold. We can just burn that thing right up. That's perfect. And I can still play my Atreus. I can play my Atreus. Well, actually, so let's attack first instead of playing the Atreus right away. Atris, Atris, whatever you like. So let's attack first. We'll draw a card off our Dream Trawler. Our opponent has no interaction right now because we have the Teferi up. And there's our D Spark. We'll hit him, gain some life back. That's perfect. And we're going to play our Oracle of Half Truths. So let's see what our opponent gives us here. Now, the risk, one risk right now is a board wipe which if he had, I think he would have played last turn. So I'm not too concerned about that at this juncture. Let's see what happens. I'll have some coffee while he's deciding for us, for himself. So a Teferi or two cards. I have a Teferi on the battlefield. It's a sure thing. It's an amazing card. Um, he could be trying to trick me, though, because this is a very appealing card. I don't think I need this too badly. I think I'd rather these two cards. And this is Dream Trawler fodder, right? So if I discard these, these are... Let's, let's take the two. What did I get? Oh, another Teferi. Another Hallowed Fountain. Okay, so we, we had two Teferis in there. I was going to say, let's see if our opponent has the board clear. He does not have the board clear, but he does have an Oath Kaya. Let's see what it's going to target. Probably the Narset. And it is going to the Narset. Okay, I have to let it, I have to let it resolve. I can't do anything about that. And now it's going to start coming the Guild Globes, things like that, I believe. This Omen of the Sea is doing okay, and here comes the eggs. So here's what we're a little concerned about, because my opponent's going to start playing Doom Foretold. You know, he's going to start getting artifacts out here. He's going to start cycling his hand. He might even be able to... So he's going to Thought Erasure me. That's perfectly fine by me. Doesn't matter. So let's see what he takes here. Probably the D-Spark. Because the D-Spark can deal with the Doom Foretold. I don't have a lot else I can deal with it. I mean, other than I can just... I just have a lot of permanence on the board. So let's draw a card. There's another Omen. So do we start by attacking? I don't... Well, I think we start with the Omen of the Sea here. A, it's a permanent. B, it's going to let me draw a card, buffing up my... I don't need another Oath of Kaya, although it does put my opponent on a little clock. Let's put them both to the bottom, though. Oath of Kaya and a land to the bottom. Drawing with Omen of the Sea, Mortify, great draw. That deals, again, deals with the thing. So, deals with the uh, Doom Foretold. Attacking with both creatures here. We're going to do 6, 7, 8, 9 to my opponent. We find another Teferi, the Time Raveler. I don't have anything. Let's plus our Teferi. I just want to keep as many permanents on the board as I can. Do I run out? So we're going to, like, faint some counter magic here. So I'm going to play a land. I'm going to put a land into play, a blue land, making it look like I have a counter spell. We're just going to run the Oath of Kai out, hit him in the face, and we're going to keep everything else. Okay, then. So now we're, we're very Doom Foretold, protected against, so there's a Doom Foretold. We're very protected against this, though, because there's just very little a Doom Foretold does to us. Here comes the Guild Globe down. And so I think our opponent is pretty much dead. That's almost all his mana. He's got one mana left. Three cards in hand. We're going to pass, and I'm just going to mortify this Doom Foretold right away. And it's out of here. Okay. And that's the end. And our opponent GG's it out. So, good first game for us. So, Doom Foretold. We want things that can deal with Doom Foretold. So, Dovin's Veto is great against that. 
Kaya the Usurper. Not going to do it. Sorcerer Spyglass. Honestly, most of the stuff does not help us. We don't need to get rid of a lot of stuff. Tyrant Scorn can probably go to make room for those vetoes. Mortify stays. The Oath of Kaya's can pro- well, Oath of Kaya is a permanent that sits on the board for us. We're actually seeing some benefit off of- we moved- put that Omen of the Sea in there. Um, and that's actually giving us- it's, it's doing good work for us because that's per, that's a permanent for us to sacrifice. That's perfect. I am tempted to use the myth, Mythical Dispute. I'm tempted to use the Elspeth Conquers Death to get stuff back. Um, is it better than anything else we have in here? Trawler stays. Ashok stays. The original is what we're considering putting in. Does the Kaya's Wrath go? I think there's... Yeah, I think there's an argument that the Kaya's Wrath is out. Because, again, it doesn't it doesn't deal with the Doom Foretold very well. So, oh, another D-Spark. That's even better. Okay, so we made a mistake. So maybe we take out that Elspeth Conquers Death. Because the rest of these I don't want to lose. So the Elspeth out. And everything else in. Cool. Let's check the time, make sure we're not going to be late for work. No, we are so early. 5.09. Holy cow. 5.09, feeling fine. All right. Ryan R. Gaming. What will you sideboard in against me? So he's black and white. So what do I worry about? If he wasn't running four agonizing remorses already, a card that exiles a card from my hand, he probably will be now. Um. Huh. Oh no, he is Esper, so there could be some counter magic coming in too. Hmm. So that that is a little worrying. No, I'm not quite certain that is that likely. Because this deck is kind of a tempo deck, right? He wants to play something on two, he wants to play something on three, and he wants to get the Doom Foretold out on four. So game starting up. My opponent will be going first. This time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Waiting on your opponent, indeed. Ryan R. Gaming. Ryan R. Gaming. It's nice to be up a game here. Okay, so our opening hand is two lands. Neither is a temple. Two oaths of Kaya, a Teferi, an omen of the sea, and an oracle of the half-truths, a Tris. So normally I would be loath to keep this, and this may bite me, but I have two lands that come into play untapped, and I have an Omen of the Sea and a Teferi. So we can play this, scry to look for our next land drop if we didn't get it already. And then if we do find it, then we've got a Teferi to cycle again that we can bounce these ults of Kaya if we really want to, or the Omen of the Sea to draw again. So I think we're going to risk it and keep this hand. Because otherwise it's a very powerful hand. It's a very excellent hand. Okay, opponent plays a Temple of Enlightenment for his first land. Zero top, one to the bottom, that's good for us. We draw a D-Spark, which is also excellent for us. Can can things... I think I've said, like, everything is excellent for us at this point, so... All right, Ryan R. Gaming's turn. I play my Hallowed Fountain into play tapped. I'm not paying two life to do nothing, I guess. All right, opponent looking, checking out his cards. Oh, here comes the Thought Erasure. Oh, a Duress! Amazing! And I'm guessing the Omen's going to go. Maybe the Teferi? Possibly the D-Spark. Yep, Teferi goes, and that's fine. We sort of knew that. So we'll pay to life to play our Godless Shrine and end our turn because we can flash in Omen of the Sea during our opponent's turn. And I guess we'll keep, we're keeping up the D-Spark. So his own Teferi comes in. We have to play Omen of the Sea right away. And we've got a Thought Erasure, we've got a Temple of Deceit. I'm tempted to Thought Erasure, keep the Thought Erasure here. But I actually need the land so I can play it on time. Well, I will be drawing the land no matter what. Because next turn I'll be drawing it. Okay. I, I get, okay, so it, so it completely doesn't matter. Neither of these cards matter here, because I'm, I'm, I'll be getting both of them. Well, let's see what Teferi's going to do. He's going to plus... So we're definitely going to start out. So let's... Do we scry first or do we thought erasure first? Let's thought erasure here. See what our opponent's cooking in his hand. Hopefully not. So his own Teferi and a Dovin's Veto. So do I just get rid of this Dovin's Veto? That's, or do I get rid of his Teferi? I think I get rid of the Dovin's Veto. It's too powerful. 
and another land that is exactly what we want. So let's keep it there. And we'll dump out our Temple of Deceit. We already know we're keeping the land there, and that's good stuff. So now we have to hope we don't see the Doom Foretold. The Doom Foretold's going to put us pretty far behind if he draws it. He's going to keep plus in this to Fairy. Doesn't look like he got the Doom Foretold. I'm quite surprised that our opponent is not... That, he's, that he keeps buffing up to the fairy. So I think in this scenario, because I can't keep up... Right, it doesn't do anything for me to keep up any instance here. Um, I could play the Omen. That would let me scry to and draw. But I think I'm playing Atrus, the Oracle. Because I'm very likely... I need... My opponent... Well, he does know this. He knows I need, he knows I need lands. Um, the other upside of Atrice here... I guess this is the upside of all my cards, right? Is that I have a bunch, I have a ton of Enter the Battlefield effects, so his Teferi can't really bounce anything of mine that's all that valuable. So Atris comes in. We're gonna be, we're looking for lands, looking for lands, um, looking for a way to deal with this Teferi. I actually don't know what we've got to do with this Teferi. So Agonizing Remorse will remove something. I think I'm taking the two pile. The Agonizing Remorse is I'm out of mana for this turn. It's a good card, actually, to play with Omen in the C next turn, but I think I'm just hoping these are lands, so... And they are, so that's great. So let's see what our opponent has. So we know he has another land in hand. We know he has Teferi. It, will he minus his Teferi that he's got out now? I don't know. Here comes the Othakaya. Probably to kill my Atris. Makes perfect sense. Nothing too surprising there. Will he minus this? Send it back. Huh, so he keeps bumping up his Teferi. Which I guess is fine so let's play the so we need to play the omen of the sea first because if we draw something to deal with this teferi i may want to put my watery grave into play a d spark and a dream trawler dream trawler is amazing here d spark is borderline useless so let's take that temple of silence is going to come out this is nice, so we'll get another scry here. And a godless shrine, we do not need any more lands now, because we have one, two, three, four, five, two more in hand, we've got seven. That is plenty, that's good con That's good draw control. Let's see what our opponent has. We have to hope he doesn't have any more discard effects. He may have another one, because he's got the Teferi, he's plusing the Teferi up. Okay, no discard effect there, we'll see what he does. Is he going to plus his Teferi again? He's going to plus it again. Opponent, opponent, what is going on? So, there's a non-zero chance that he has some counter magic in hand. Is it worth it to risk the Dream Trawler here for that? I think so. I think I make him have it. He's got five mana. He's got two cards I don't know about. So let's dump the Dream Trawler. And I'm making him have it. He doesn't have any counters here. And I got cards to dis... So the nice part about this is I've got lots and lots of cards to discard. If he has a board clear, too bad, so sad for us. Yeah, well, I will happily discard a card. Goodbye, Temple of Silence. Okay. Noxious Grasp will not resolve. I, I got four more cards to discard. I have more cards to discard than he owns, so. <laughs> we'll see if he's going, if this is bad, if what he's going to do here. We, <laughs> we have this eight to fairy right now. We'll see what my opponent has. Is he going to try and bounce the dream? Is he going to make me discard another card? I think it's maybe worth it. So another card gone. Othakaya this time is leaving. All right. Dream Trawler is hexproof again. This is, this is probably very frustrating for my opponent. I wouldn't blame him. There's the Doom Foretold. We are letting this one stay out. That's okay. Wow. So it's amazing how strong these Omens of the Sea have ended up being in this game like ridiculously lucky omens of the sea. So do we attack first? Do we despark? Do we mortify agonizing remorse? So he bounced this time. We can get rid of this Teferi. I think we start with an agonizing remorse. I really just lock our opponent down. So I want to get rid I think I want to get rid of this doom foretold. And then I'm going to de well, let's attack actually into his Teferi. Yep, I'm going to take a little damage, but we're going to gain a lot more life, and we're going to get really far ahead here. 
And I think this game is pretty much wrapped up, right? Like, goodbye, that thing. And we're in very, very, we're in a very good spot now. So my opponent can play a Teferi. If he's got a board clear, that's going to put us behind, but I think that's okay. Here comes the Teferi, that's okay. I'm assuming he's going to try and bounce the Dream Trawler again. I'm just going to make it hexproof, and we're going to say goodbye to another Oath of Kaya. That's good for us. Sure. Okay, and we're in pretty decent shape here because we are going to... Do we attack this? I think so. Just really get rid of his options. I maybe should be attacking face here, but... And so then we'll play Teferi or Narset here. I think we Narset just to really limit our opponents, because his only catch-up mechanism is going to be a big chain of artifacts and enchantments. Another Omen of the Sea. Beautiful. So we'll play a Temple. Ooh, I actually... Ooh, Dovin's V... Okay. I take it all back. That's amazing. That's an amazing card to have on top. Ooh, I wish I had it, though, in my hand. That's the only difference. So we'll see what our opponent draws. He's got a... He has to find a board clear, basically. And if I draw this, it's basically all done. The game is going to be over. Because no board, I won't let any more board clears go off Oath of Kaya. Well, I'll let that resolve. It does nothing to me. <clears throat> oh, it does kill my Narset. Okay. But he's down to two mana now, and so this is really tough. And so he's passing the turn. I'm going to play the Omen of the Sea here. And we'll scry the Temple of Deceit. We, we see our Dovin's Veto, obviously. And the Temple of Deceit. We'll scry the Temple of Deceit to the bottom. Draw the Dovin's Veto. And it's my turn. And another Omen of the Sea. Okay. So we're going to bop our Teferi down first. Do I minus him here? I think I plus him. I don't want my opponent having just essentially any more shenanigans. And I don't really... Like, my opponent is now under the clock, and I know that I'm holding this Dovin's Veto. So he's really just... Let's get our land in play. Right, I, I just don't want to give him any opportunities to catch up. So here's Ashiok. Does Ashiok do any... Does Ashiok scare me in any way? I think I let the Ashiok resolve. Like, I, I don't think this does anything to me. We still have 34 cards. That's all fine. I, I just don't think I'm too worried about the Ashiok here. Wow, wow. That, that sound effect is in, it's crazy. So, sweet, we will draw step. I mean, okay, we'll, we actually will get rid of this Ashiok, though. Okay. And then, if you've never seen this trick, if you have Teferi, if you've plus your Teferi, you can actually, um, well, let's give, give me one second. A tree, so Oracle of half truth, so that's good. Speeds up our clock on him. But if you've never seen this, I can put this in full control, and I can Thought Erasure my opponent after his draw step. So there we go. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, it didn't... For some reason, I could not get it to... Oh, well, he quit anyways. That's great. But um, I guess maybe I need to put it on a different kind of full control or something. I don't know. It shows what I know. But you can you can do this. You can put on full control, and at the end of his draw step, you can Thought Erasure him with the Deferi ability. And we're up to Bronze 1. We're doing great. Let's see, that was a very good game. Do we have time for another one? 522. Um, you know what? We're going to play one, maybe a few best of ones using a different deck. Possibly a deck. Oh, oh, how do I get out of this? That will fulfill this. Black or green spells. Okay. So let's best of one in the non Q in the non-ranked Q. And we want to play green and black spells, so we're going to play a Sultai Ramp deck. You want to take a quick look at this one. It's got Paradise Druid, Tyrant Scorn, Growth Spiral. This is this is the fun, though. Four Death Sprout. Which, if you haven't seen this card, destroy target creature, put a basic land into play tapped. Four Nissas. Four Casualties of War. Four Hydroid Krasis. Right? This is just all the all the good stuff. 
And that's it, right? And then obviously a bunch of lands. We got one Gadwick, four Voracious Hydras. So let's make some progress on this quest. We'll see how it goes. Okay, now I'm getting warm. My heater is gone long enough. Say hello to Mr. Heater, everyone watching the video. A regular contributor. Bump a bum, heater is off. Okay, what do we got here? <laughs> Two casualties of so what am I what am I opening hand? I've got a fable passage. A temple of Melody. Melady. Malady. How do you say this? Malady? I think Malady. And a breeding pool. Three lands. Then I've got two casualties of war. Not what I want to see. But a Paradise Druid and a Voracious Hydra. I th this is best one. It's not, you know, unranked. Do whatever you want. We're keeping it. We're going to throw it on this temple. We'll scry. We're going to find more and more lands. That's our plan. A Death Sprout. I like that. That's good. An Overgrown Tomb. That's a land. I'll take that one too. So this was really good for us to draw. Mainly because next turn I really want to throw out the Paradise Druid. The turn after that, I'd like to Death Sprout, and then I have four land. You know, then I've got plenty of lands. Okay, so we've got a season of growth out. Which so we've got a blue, white, green. I'm against a blue, white, green deck, apparently. I don't want overgrown tomb. I want breeding pool. Playing the Paradise Druid. And I'm hoping my opponent just plays a creature here. If you'd be so kind to just play a creature. He didn't play one. Deathsprout is an instant, so I think we enter the tap land and we just... Nope, no, 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 no attacks. End turn. Perfect. Because we're just going to hold up Deathsprout. If he plays a creature, we're going to, you know, bop it on the forehead. He says that he doesn't want to go. Okay, he has nothing to play. I don't understand. So let's... We're just going to pop our Fabled Passage... So let's see, we've got three green, two black, one blue. So do I need another blue? Do I need another green? Yes, we need more green. More green, more green. So we have five mana. I could grow spiral. Well, no, I can grow spiral during his turn and hold up the death sprout, which is what we're going to do. And Tyrant Scorn. We have lots of stuff here. I wish he would play a creature, like maybe an expensive one. Okay. So he's not playing anything this turn. So we're going to Growth Spiral. We see a Nyssa. Ooh, tough break for me. No land drop. He's not doing anything right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think we're going to keep holding up this Death Sprout. And we can attack with this now. That's fine. Okay. We'll see if it end a turn. We'll see if he's got anything to play now. Is he just holding, like... Should I be very, very afraid? Is he holding, like, a bunch... Did he take a hand like mine where he's got, like... He's like, well, I guess I have two casualties of war. Uh, okay, so again, he's going to do nothing. There's the breeding pool. So... Maybe I try and bait out a counter spell with this Nissa. No, I think keeping the Nissa is better. What well, casualties of war here? Destroy an enchantment, destroy a land. Done. Oh wow. And let's make I don't want to get counterspelled really ever again. So if I can get rid of this blue mana, it's gonna feel good. CTM005, okay. Counterspell? What is this what is this deck? What is your deck? What does your deck do? Does it play cards? You have three mana now. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, he has missed some land drops, I think. Oh, he's an enchantment deck. Maybe that's not that surprising. Did he just top deck this? Oh, I guess so. No, not my paradise, Druid. Pay two life. What's Death Sprout here? Let's say goodbye to your Starfield Mystic. I would like a land, and this time... Eh, let's go get more green. Whoops. I didn't have to shock in there. This is what happens. See, in the, in my ranked games, my brain was, you know, turned on. So I think we're just bopping Nissa down here. This is the answer. Right? 
And so unless he has an answer for this, we're in good shape. So I think we'll do the temple here. We'll go straight to combat. I don't expect my opponent to have anything to do with this. At least not in this. He might have a Banishing Light. And if he does, that's probably fine. And a temple, I don't need any more lands right now. We've got plenty of mana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, I feel a little bad for my opponent because he doesn't know that I still have the cas another Casualties of War, which, yeah, okay. So maybe he just got mana, maybe he just had mana screwed, or, or he didn't get any creatures, that's what seemed like it. He played turn two, the uh, Season of Growth. Just never got anything to put anything on it. What time is it? Let's see, 528. We can do probably a few more. Plus, we haven't played our black and green spells yet, so we have to we have to keep playing until we finish that. All right, one more game with this deck. This deck's cool too, so I'll put both of these down in the description. Um, because the Sultai Ramp, the Sultai Ramp's actually from a recent tournament, I think. I'd have to look it up. Okay, so our opening hand, we have got we get to go first. We have got Temple of Deceit, Water Grave, Overgrown Tomb, and a Swamp. So four lands. Mixture of temples and tap and pain, you know, the shock lands and stuff like that. Uh, a tyrant scorn, a casualties of war, and a growth spiral. So this is a very good opening hand. So we're definitely going to keep this growth. I'm holding four lands and a growth spiral. So let's dump out our temple of deceit first. Paradise druid help us ramp up. I think I want to keep this because getting to that casualties of war is very important to me. But we may be against... So our opponent plays Temple of Deceit, blue-black deck, which has me a little nervous. So Overgrown Tomb, Shock In, and Turn, because we'll, we will be growth spiraling during this next turn. Okay, so we see we've got Grixis. I am going to growth spiral ahead of this, I think. Put a breeding pool into play. I don't want him to... He's going to take my casualties, probably. I mean, that's what I would do if I were him. Right, like most of this deck is we're hoping to find some gas. Yep, so goodbye casualties. So, so sad to see it go. That's the risk. There's a death sprout. <sighs> I think I play the Paradise Druid. I don't really expect him to um, play a creature here for me to death sprout during his turn, so... Okay, so make me discard, and I'm, I mean, I'm going to lose life. Tyrant Scorn's just going. I don't need Tyrant Scorn. And did, okay, nope, he's got a land. He's got a scry off the land, too. One top, zero bottom. Okay, so we're playing the Fabled Passage here. I'm just attacking with my Druid, and ending turn. And we'll want to pop this for our turn. I want to pull a land out of our deck. I don't really want to top deck a land anymore. That's okay. Yep. Yep. So we could hit this to pull even another land out. I don't think I should because... <laughs> I think there's maybe many titans in his deck. It's going to be a little scary. Oh, does he have a shock or something? So let's pop this. Um, we want more green at this point and pass and my turn and there's the hydroid crisis so this is just gonna blow him up kind of well it's not gonna blow him up but two one two three four so we can play the crisis for four but it's gonna he's been you know giving me lots of hand hate but this is gonna put a thread on the board it's gonna refill my hand one two three four i mean six is the amount of mana that i want so we play that and if i have to discard a paradise druid to another one of these things, whatever. All right, so what's the escape cost on these? Exile five other cards. Okay, he's not even close to doing that. And Ashiok the Nightmare Muse, which I actually don't find to be too scary right now. We'll see what he does. Ah, rats. I was hoping that he might... Uh... So I'm tempted... So. So full control, two attackers. Can I death sprout this now? Yep. I was gonna say I have to kill that before um in the forest. Come on in. Next and pow pow. 
So does my opponent run board clears? That's the question. Let's just put some pressure on him. Oh, I guess I should have played this. I guess I should have played it. Okay, he's gonna Tyrant Scorn that thing. So now we're in, we're not in a great spot here, I would say. Not in a horrible spot. Angrath's Rampage, uh, okay. I guess I'll sacrifice a Druid. Ooh, bad draws for us though. Um, do I just hold these to make him think I have stuff? I don't think so. I think I'd rather just, if I play a Krasis or a Gadwick or something, I want to have as much mana as possible. Gadwick would be pretty... Oh, no, Gadwick would be actually horrible right now. Because I do not have three blue. That would be... It would be a terrible... Oh, no, I have a Paradise Druid. Okay. So Gadwick would be the ideal draw, assuming my Paradise Druid makes it through the night. In which case, I would get to draw one, two, three, four, five, six... I'd draw a ton of cards. Okay. We'd almost certainly win in that scenario. Okay, here's Nicole Bolas. It's going to plus. Uh, I guess I'm just getting rid of this. And that was his turn. Wow. Hurts quite a bit. No, get out of here, please. <laughs> uh, that's what you get for playing a deck. This deck probably has more lands than normal. Now, I will. what I will say about this game... Um, what do I got to get rid of? We're keeping all our blue mana. Uh, sure, we'll get rid of that thing. That's whatever. I guess I could have gotten rid of the swamp. And we're probably just dead here. Like, if we don't top deck something, I think we're dropping out of this game. Okay, sure. And I can't discard anything, so something else happens. I just lose it. I just lose three life. And a Paradise Druid. Give our opponent a good game. And say goodbye. Because we're basically done here. We don't, I don't have anything to do with this game anymore. <laughs> like, he's got Nicole Bolas. We just kind of drew lands. Way too many lands for too long. All right, I think that's where we're going to end it. Yeah, you can see we finished our quest. Awesome, right? You can see, look at our weekly wins. We're doing so good. And we got a pack. Let's let's open the pack quick. Okay, I am predicting... So I'm predicting for this, it's not going to be a mythic. This is my prediction. Not a mythic, and it's not going to be a wild card. It's going to be a very middling rare. It'll be like a rare that... A rare that, like, you know that there's like a rare land that's the maze or something that is a good card, except I already have... I think I've already pulled two, and you you definitely would not put three or four of these in a deck. So let's see. Is it that maze? <sighs> okay, so I take everything back. <laughs> this was a very good pull. Okay. All right, that's it. Um, have a nice day at work, people. I will do the same. I have to go upstairs, put out the trash, um, and upload this video. So have a good one. Goodbye. This is the end.